Hi, my name is Cece and thanks for joining me for another Donna Downey Studios Artist Gang video. As many of you, I'm sure, I do spend a lot of time art journaling and although I do consider my journal to be more of a working journal, sometimes I can spend quite a bit of time making my pages pretty. Now, I have a book full of pretty pages, but the front and back cover, not so much. So the inside's pretty, the outside, eh. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I took this boring brown journal and turned it into something a little bit more personalized and a little bit prettier to look at. I'm removing the elastic because most of the time it breaks on me and I don't use it all that much. Using a pair of pliers, I was able to easily remove the two eyelets. The theme for the cover is all about being an artist, so I saw it fitting to use canvas as a base. This is Claudine Helmet's Sticky Back Canvas, and I'm going to be adding a piece in the front and one in the back. And it doesn't cover the whole surface, but it doesn't bother me at all. I'm prepping my surface with a nice even coat of white gesso. And if you're using a dilution journal like I am, make sure that you cover the grooves on the spine and open the book kind of like a tent so that it dries nicely. I'd guard to protect my hands because I like to paint with my fingers as well. The background of these two pages will be different shades of teal and I'm gonna use titanium white to vary the intensity of the teal color. And then I'm going to be adding some clusters of colors. However, I do want quite a lot of white because of all that I'm going to be adding. So the colors were, will mostly be um, concentrated towards the edges of the book. I'm going to start with Chronacridone Magenta. This is the airbrush paint. I know it's not being made anymore, but you can use the high flow. And I let that drip because dripping makes me happy. <laughs> and I'm going to cr start creating my clusters. Now the clusters will be with the quinacridone magenta, fluorescent pink, yellow green, and cadmium yellow hue. And as usual, all the supplies that I'm using today will be listed on Donna's blog as well as mine and the links will be down below in the description box. This is a fine tip applicator bottle that I filled with fluorescent pink golden paint and airbrush medium and I'm just making some dots and some streaks and just to get a little bit of texture. I'm going to be working with lots of colors and also layering so here's a tip you can see I'm adding yellow and I'm walking it into the fluorescent pink and of course I get a nice orange and that's okay because it's intentional but if you want to have two distinct colors and not having your colors mixed together make sure that the color you first apply is dry and then go in on top and add your wet paint much like I'm doing right now, I'm adding titanium white, but because the paint underneath is dry, my titanium white is not mixing with any of the colors. I have another tip to share with you. I often use the viewfinder of my video camera to see where my work is going. Because I have an overhead setup, it gives me kind of like an aerial view of the whole work because when you're sitting down, you have a different perspective. Of course, now not everybody is recording their, um, their art process. So if that's the case, then you can take your book and put it on the floor and look at it from above. And then that way you'll be able to determine or you'll have a better idea of where you need to add paint or where you need to remove stuff. This is the Grunge Halftone Dots by Donna Downey Studios and I'm using a makeup sponge and titanium white to add some white dots, mostly over the clusters of colors that I have. Mm -hmm. 
This stencil is called Sprout and it is by Donna Downey Studios and it's one of her newest releases. And for this I'm using teal paint that I'm adding with a makeup sponge and then I'm going to go over some parts with the yellow green paint as well. This stencil is by far one of my favorites. This is the Artist Stencil by Donna Downey Studios. And with light modeling paste, I'm applying a very thick coat. I want this raised as much as possible. And I'm gonna let that air dry, no heat setting because I don't want anything to puff up or bubble up. And once it's dry, I'm placing the stencil over again and using a makeup sponge and some carbon black paint, I'm going over the whole thing. And I'm also using teal at the end of the brush. And as you can see, the word texture is not very legible. That's because my makeup sponge was loaded too much with paint. But there's a way to fix that. I'm going to take Q-tips and I'm going to get rid of as much black paint as I can around the word. And the object here is not to fix every single place where paint has seeped underneath the stencil, but just to make everything legible. I don't want anything too perfect. So I'm using a liner brush with white paint and I'm kind of like smoothing out the areas where there's a lot of black and that will allow me to place the stencil back over the word, load up my makeup sponge, not too much, and then add the black on top. There's another way to do that. You can also use a permanent ink pen like this Pit Artist Pen to go over the letters as well. Both methods work. Okay, here's another how to fix a mistake. <laughs> I have stamped this in Jet Black Archival ink. It's a nice quote from the Create Today stamp set. Of course, it was crooked and because it's archival ink, you can't remove it. So I'm going to camouflage the original stamping with white paint and then I'm going to stamp over again and that's even going to be better because the quote will be even more emphasized. I need to protect the spine for the next step. So I'm adding a piece of masking tape over it and I'm going to prop my book on something just to have it elevated. And then I'm going to add pouring medium. Now pouring medium is not self leveling. You can also use self leveling gel. However, I like to work with pouring medium a little bit more because it's not so finicky. You can apply it with a brush if you want to. However, try not to overwork it so as not to create any air bubbles or unnecessary creases. I would also recommend that you let that dry overnight before touching it. Uh, just keep in mind that the drying time varies depending on how thick you add the pouring medium. This is what my book looked like before I added the pouring medium. And you'll notice that the medium has a slight white tint to it, but it dries completely clear and it protects my book. I've had so much fun doing this and I hope that you'll give it a try. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to the Artist Gang channel so that you don't miss any of our weekly tutorials. As usual, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below and I will see you later. Bye.